Hey there, um, everyone. That's me, Tiffany, again. I just wanted to jump on here briefly and share some scripture uh, that, um, sorry, I'm outside and my daughter's busy mowing today. Probably not the best time to be outside sharing, but um, I just wanted to read um, a few passages of scripture out of the book of John today. Um, at church on Sunday, our pastor was reading out of the book of John and his message was on um, I think John chapter 13, maybe 14. Um, I was listening. I promise I was listening, Pastor. Um, but I was also just spending time just reading um, through the phrases of when Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Um, and I know that all of us right now are really struggling with what is truth, um, what are lies, what are conspiracies. Um, conspiracies, one on one angle um, and conspiracies on another angle and we're you know most of us are kind of stuck in the middle trying to figure out like what is truth um, and just that phrase um, that I was reading in scripture on Sunday morning when Jesus says I tell you the truth um, I know that trusting um, is almost impossible for many of us these days uh, because we have either lived in a life where there has been a lot of lying and deception uh, whether that's been in um, in our family settings, being raised um, in unhealthy family situations or um, in unhealthy relationships with friendships or in marriages. Um, and now we're seeing it you know, just like unleashed um, on the media, just so many lies and conspiracies. Um, sorry, uh, if it gets really loud here, <laughs> she's just coming up next to the deck here next to me. Um, but truth, um, is a really difficult thing uh, for us to grab a hold of um, because we also live in a day and age um, when uh, truth is really irrelevant um, or truth is whatever you decide truth is. And last night, um, my husband and I were reading through um, John um, chapters 12 and, and 13 up to 14. Um, just talking with our children about how they live in a day and age where everyone's truth is their own truth. And so just because I say something is truth, the next person next to me is, will say to me, well, I don't feel that that's my truth. Um, I feel like my truth is this, and this is how I feel my truth is. And, and we live in a very um, emotionally feelings-based um, world right now where biblical, logical, factual, scientific um, truth is irrelevant. Um, it's being erased um, across the board. Um, even in classrooms, uh, they just are erasing basic biological truths um, based on feelings and how one feels about themselves or how one feels they should be able to live or, or whatever. And so when we hear, I'm telling you the truth, I'm not lying, we just have this tendency of like, uh, I don't really know if I can really trust that. Uh, but my plea to you today, in this world of so much confusion and so much lying going on and so many different people playing us for their agendas, is to know that there is one who does speak truth. That Jesus speaks truth his word is absolute truth and we were talking with our children last night that you know you are living in a day right now when when you decide that you need to you know when you need to, to defend your faith or why you believe certain things are wrong um, you'll be shamed for them um, you'll be put down for them you will be scorned um, you will be cut out um, we are living in a day where biblical values and truths are very quickly being shut down um, and so we have to know why we believe what we believe. We can't just say, well, I just think it's true because I feel like it is, because feelings aren't facts. And God's word is solid biblical truth because God made everything. He made the rules. He made the laws. He made our bodies. He made the design of marriage. He made um, man and woman. He made right and wrong. And so, um, sorry, again, um, we aren't the writers of the grand story. The grand story is the author of all creation, God the Father, the creator of the universe. And in Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God. That's the author. That's the one who's writing the story. And we talked about with our kids last night that, that it's not going to matter. 
people are going to come up against them and they're going to argue with them and our kids are going to have to say, you may not like this. I'm not against you. I'm not hating on you. I'm not wanting to fight with you. But this is the truth. This is God's way because Jesus himself says, I tell you the truth. And there is no lying in him. There is, he doesn't have the ability to even lie. And so I just wanted to read a couple of those verses to you that the Lord shares with his servants before um, his, his crucifixion, how he predicts his betrayal and he talks with them and he washes his disciples' feet. And that again is such a beautiful picture of the humility um, of God, the meekness of Jesus, how he um, could have come into this world with great power and splendor and with this army to just wipe us out and to take us all down because he is a holy God but he's also a just and good and loving and forgiving God. And so he sends his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to tell us to live, to to be an example, to say, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. And that's exactly what he's telling his disciples. When a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. And I don't know about you, but social media, the news, everywhere you turn, there is just darkness. Evil is being unleashed. God has handed us over to our sinful natures. We are seeing depravity like we have never seen it before at all angles, on all fronts, from every which direction. And God is pleading with us, turn and repent. God's word says that he is faithful and just to forgive if we are willing to confess our sin. And that he is willing to welcome us into the family of God if we are willing to acknowledge that we are sinners in need of forgiveness. And so it goes on to say, um, and John, hold on just a second here. Um, the verses that follow that, as for the person who hears my words but does not keep them I do not judge him for I did not come to judge the world but to save it but there is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words that very word which I spoke will condemn him at the last day for I did not speak on my own accord but the father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it I know that his command leads to eternal life so whatever I say I say it just what the father has told me to say again Jesus speaks on the behalf of his father completely truthfully and when we go on to a few verses later on after he washes his disciples feet he asks them this really important question and I believe every single one of us in our human experience at one point in our life are going to have to answer this question do you understand what I have done for you now, I know Jesus is speaking about how he has washed his disciples' feet and how he has come to share about how he has come to serve on the behalf of his Father so that people can know how to love like him and, and how he came to wash us with the purity of his blood, how he, became to, he came to wash us and to cleanse us from our sin. Because this is a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. You see, he's wanting us to be washed in his saving grace by confessing our sin he can wash us clean and Jesus says do you understand what I have done for you do we understand what Jesus has done for us do we understand truly what the cross was meant do we understand truly the mission of Jesus do we understand truly what God has been doing since the beginning of time he has been calling us to himself he has been inviting us to himself he has been leading us and drawing us into this most amazing life-giving relationship God is calling us and beckoning us to himself and so I just want to ask you this question today do you understand what Jesus has done for you do you understand and if you do, the Lord will wash you clean if you confess your sin. And he will bless you and he will draw you into a, just the most amazing life-giving relationship. A, a relationship that you have never experienced at a human level. And in verse 14, 
or chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for the life you've given us. I thank you for the gift of grace and mercy and forgiveness. God, I am begging you to open the eyes of those who are lost, that feel that they are right with you, but have not truly given their life to you, Lord. God, I pray that you would open their eyes, that you would soften their hearts, that you would allow them to understand their need for repentance and the receiving of your grace, Lord Jesus, and forgiveness. God, I ask also in the name of Jesus that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit on our nation, that you would just unleash in your body of believers, your church, a love like we have not seen before, that you would send us out to the hurting, to the broken, to the confused, to, to the completely and absolutely misguided, misled, deceived out there that the enemy has been lying to for so long that we would bring the answer of hope and truth to them. Lord, I pray that you would just empower your church, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would give us the words to say, that your anointing would be upon us, that the Holy Spirit would just fill us with your fire, with your love, with your truth, and that you would bring to mind scripture that we need to know when we need to speak it, God, that you would lead us in truth, that you would lead us in love, that you would fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and mercy, and self-control. God, send us out and bring us to a place of revival and repentance. God, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, we pray victory. We pray for victory in this, in this nation, that we would rise up and awaken like we never have before. Lord, bring revival. Lord, push back the enemy. Lord, shut down his agendas. Lord, demolish his strongholds. Lord, get rid of his, his camps that he has set up around this nation and destroy them, God. Arise and awaken the church and set our hearts on fire to love and to honor you above all things. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you for your good and faithful, trustworthy word. Amen. God bless you guys.